Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. The Super Nintendo is a console that doesn't get a whole lot of attention on my channel, but today I'm remedying that by talking about not one, but two games, Pocky and Rocky and Pocky and Rocky 2. A duo of games which look very similar, but actually have a surprising amount of differences. Pocky and Rocky was developed by Natsume and released for the Super Nintendo in North America in 1993. It's a multi-directional scrolling shooter that can be played with one or two players. It could very much be considered a cute em up a shooter focused more on cute cartoon characters and animals than spaceships and guns. You play as either Shrine Maiden Pocky or her pal Rocky the Tanuki. They're out to save a group of Nopino goblins who are under a spell that's making them hostile. But before we get into the gameplay, let's take a quick look at the origins of this series. Pocky and Rocky is part of the Japanese series Kiki Kai Kai, a title which has a very different meaning if you're a fan of drag. The series was originally by Taito and started off as an arcade game in 1986. A sequel was released on the Famicom Disk System. The third game, Kiki Kai Kai Nazo no Kuromanto, first released on Super Famicom, is the game that finally made it to North America as Pocky and Rocky. At the start, you can choose which of the two characters to play. There are minor differences between them. One moves faster, one can slide further, one throws cards while the other throws leaves, but overall, the experience is pretty similar. You can move and shoot in eight directions. One button allows you to throw a continuous stream of cards, and another does a single throw that doesn't seem all that useful. You can also use a melee attack to get enemies very close to you, as well as protect yourself from most projectiles, so do not discount this ability like I did for the first levels. There's also a dodge that will let you slide across the screen and a strong limited-use bomb. In the game's start menu, you can remap the buttons in any way you choose, which I always like to see. Holding down the melee attack button will trigger a special ability. Pocky will spin around, damaging anything she touches, while Rocky will turn to stone, becoming briefly invincible. I found the amount of time these abilities require to charge up made them more of a danger to myself than a boon. You start the game with four hearts, two extra lives, and one bomb. As you play, you'll run into picnic baskets that contain items like health refills, more bombs, shields, and power-ups for your ranged attacks. The blue ones will make your attack spread out more, while the red is a powerful and focused fire attack. You'll want to build up one or the other, and I always found the spread shot more useful. If you lose all your hearts, you continue from exactly where you are, if you have lives left. For such an adorable and friendly looking game, Pocky and Rocky gets very challenging very quickly. Getting past stage 2 was quite difficult. Almost as difficult as not winding up singing Rocky Raccoon for hours any time I booted one of these games up. There are three difficulty modes to choose from at the start of the game, but I only played on normal. Choosing one of the other difficulties impacts enemy health and power. There are only six stages in the game, and there are infinite continues, but the stages are quite long, around seven minutes each, and using a continue puts you back at the beginning. There's also no save or password system. Stage 1's Haunted Shrine is a good introductory difficulty. You're mostly facing down enemies with few projectiles, and it's the shortest stage by far. But then Stage 2's Enchanted Forest ramps things up considerably, with erratically moving monkeys, fireball projectiles, and enemies that pop out of the ground. The last half of the stage provides a real challenge, as you have to travel downriver on a raft. Here, enemies come at you from every direction, and the small safe area you have means that your slide ability is just as likely to put you in the water as save you from damage. While on the raft, you'll face both a mini-boss and a final octopus boss. And things just keep getting tougher from there, with many levels giving you limited room to move around or making the environments themselves be a danger to you. 
Still, the game is quite fun and it looks absolutely fantastic. Each stage is so vibrant, whether you're in an emerald forest, floating over blue, constantly churning water, aboard an airship high in the sky, or in an industrial-looking fortress where everything is out to kill you. Each stage's enemies have distinct designs, and the many mini-bosses and end-bosses fit with the level themes and have interesting attack patterns. I particularly liked fighting a stock of bamboo in the Enchanted Forest and the vampire boss in the Forbidden Castle, who can turn into a bat and make segments of the floor unsafe for you to stand on. The final boss, though, is a ridiculously long and difficult fight. The game's music is decent, fitting of all the levels, if not something that stands out all that much. I do really appreciate the sound effects, though. Hitting enemies sounds quite impactful, and spell effects are great. Between each stage, there's a little story segment where Pocky and Rocky talk to the defeated boss and find out where to go next. I'm not usually one for a lot of story bits in my shmups, but these are so beautifully done and I honestly appreciate a bit of a breather between levels. Pocky and Rocky has an excellent two-player co-op mode. Everything functions pretty much the same as in solo play, but you get some help in taking out the many enemies. The one extra ability, if you want to call it that, is that if you slide into the other player, they'll go spinning across the screen, damaging any enemies they touch. This can be useful, though it also kind of sucks to lose control of your character. If one player uses up all their lives, the other has the option to share some of theirs. When it came to Pocky and Rocky 2, Natsume could have easily just made more of the same but they decided instead to change things up considerably. For better, and sometimes for worse. Pocky and Rocky 2 released in 1994. In this one, you're rescuing a princess. It's still a multi-directional shooter, but shows a different direction right away by making Pocky the only playable character, and letting you choose one of three companions to take with you. Rocky is there, as is Little Ninja and Bomber Bob. Your ability set has also changed. The useless single card throw is gone. Now you have automatic fire, your melee attack, you can throw your partner at enemies, and use magic, which is really poorly explained. This game also has more limited button remapping options. Stage 1 is an optional practice stage, which functions as a tutorial. Unless you've never played a video game before, this isn't all that useful, and it takes way too long. You practice moving, shooting, swinging your wand. There is a segment to practice magic, but going by what you're shown here, you'd think it just lets you switch to controlling your partner and then swap back. You control Pocky while your chosen companion follows along behind, attacking enemies as they go. They are susceptible to attacks, and if they take a few hits, they'll disappear for a time. The game quickly shows you the power of throwing your partner, as you'll come across a few doors that will fall much faster from throws than from your ranged attack. You'll also notice that this game is not strictly linear. You're often presented with a fork in the road, and different paths can take you to different items and characters. Picnic baskets contain weapon power-ups, just one type this time around, keys to open locked boxes, and various items of clothing that will let Pocky take extra hits before losing a life. There are no hearts shown on the UI, and instead you need to pay attention to what she's wearing to see how close to death she is. Yes, getting hit does knock armor and clothing off our heroine, but not in too gross of a way. You'll also find a number of houses and shops to enter. You can buy upgrades with the gold you've collected, find people to talk to who may help you in some way, and even find new companions who will be willing to join you. You can also find items that will allow you to change your partner within the level. Each companion has a different type of attack and effect when you throw them. They also have different magical abilities. Little Ninja can open locked boxes without a key. 
Bomber Bob can lift heavy objects to open new paths. The missable Tangi can fly to out of reach areas. I bet a lot of kids in the 90s who rented this or just didn't bother reading the manual had no idea how magic worked. At first, I wasn't really sure about the addition of things like shops and magic abilities. Especially in the first couple stages, it seemed to really slow the pace of the game. However, I began to appreciate it more as I played on. You get access to so many more items in this game than the first, and it makes completing it without cheating so much more doable. There's also a password system here. If you get a game over, you'll be given the code to return to the level you're on, and there are still unlimited continues. This game is a bit longer at 9 stages as opposed to 6. Some, the last stage in particular, are quite long and the boss fights can take a while. In most stages, you control the pace at which you move, and you can even backtrack, but stages 5 and 8 are auto-scrollers. You get to ride the Mad Dog and a dragon as you face down foes. And you do not get a companion here. It's all you. I really liked how these stages change things up a little. Hockey and Rocky 2 has even more gorgeous pixel art and animations. The colors really pop and the environments come alive. Stage 2 is a standout, which is a nighttime scene through fields of tall grass and flowing streams, where you'll be facing off against masked, lantern-wielding enemies and ornate stone tablets. The final stage is the interior of a beautiful Japanese palace, filled with shoji screens, where you'll face off against archers and ninjas, including some ninja turtles. Take that, Leonardo! The boss fights in this game are also really excellent. They are challenging, but fair, and mix up their attacks often to keep you on your toes. The Stage 3 boss, Foxy, is beautiful. He sends little foxes after you, throws fans, and moves around very quickly. Stage 6's Demon Gate is also really cool, taking up almost the entire top of the screen as he spouts ranged attacks from his shoulders, throws his fists, and causes ice spikes to rise from the ground. The design of all the fights, both visually and mechanically, are great. I also think the partner throwing mechanic adds an extra layer of strategy that I really enjoyed. You need to pick your timing wisely, as the effect from the impact will stay and do damage in one spot for a time. If you miss or the boss moves away immediately, you've not only wasted the throw, but now lack your partner's extra firepower until they respawn. I ended up really liking the changes that came in Pocky and Rocky 2 and had a blast playing the game through by myself. When it came to co-op though, I am not a fan. Player 1 controls Pocky, while Player 2 controls the companion. They get to pick from the initial three and can change during the levels with the character changing pickup, but their abilities are limited. They can shoot and, well, that's about it. They can't melee attack, they can't pick up items. If Player 1 throws them, they just go away and have nothing to do for a while. If either player presses the magic button, Pocky turns into the companion and then you both just fight over the controls. The manual warns that two-player mode requires a great amount of strategy, but I think it just sucks. Overall, I think Pocky and Rocky are a great duo of games. The first one is very fun, but very challenging. If you like your shooters more on the straightforward side and to be more difficult, or if you're looking for a great co-op experience, definitely play this one. However, if you want a bit of an easier time with lots of items to find, multiple paths, and the strategy of learning how to use your companion characters, then this is the one for you. I'd skip the co-op though. Honestly, both of these games look fantastic, are fun to play, and have great controls. The actual cartridges for these games go for a stupid amount of money, but I definitely recommend checking out the ROMs. But wait, there's more. Pocky and Rocky is coming back. 
Pocky and Rocky Reshrined was announced by Natsume earlier this year. It is planned to come out in Fall 2021 for Switch and PS4. The press release specifically calls it a sequel, but based on the teaser trailer, it looks incredibly similar to the first game. The level design, bosses, and story are all very familiar, though it does look like there are also a few new visuals and abilities for both the heroes and enemies. Hopefully, the game is ready to release soon and it'll make the series more easily accessible to people. If you want to see more, check out my review of Zombies Ate My Neighbors, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.